We're on the Medway and I have company. I have here the prof. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Kate Spencer, you'll remember from the River Wandle video. So we have some proper, proper experience and proper expertise. Kate did her PhD down here on the Medway. We'll talk about that as we go. At the moment, we're just trying to work out where the dickens we're going. Where are we going, Kate? Where are we? Uh, well, it's, Joe, it's the first time I've come back here, I think, for 30 years since I did my PhD. So I've brought, I've brought you back to where I originally kind of got stuck in the mud. <laughs> um, and we are, where are we? We're on the, the south coast of the Medway. And actually, I'm surprised how narrow it is. I kind of, in my, in my memory, it was a much, much bigger river, but I think it, it really opens up. Maybe as we, yeah, as we, and we're, we're kind of at the narrowest, at the narrowest stretch. So I'm going to suggest that we walk along the Saxon Shoreway for a few miles, taking in delights such as Copperus Marshes, Horrid Hill, Bloor's Wharf, Motney Hill, and I'm not quite sure whether we'll make it to Bedlam's Bottom. <laughs> I love these kind of like muddy estuarine environments like that. You get the old jets. I find it very romantic. I mean, I I loved being out here. I'd never. I when I came to work out here, I'd never experienced anything like this. And there was something really, really kind of calm and peaceful. Particularly being kind of out. You know, on the marshes, like in the middle of the estuary, it's just like you've got these huge skies. You've got the, you know, all you can really hear is a bit of water and and, and kind of birds, and it feels really like isolated and, and lonely. And uh, and I'd never experienced. You know, I grew up in Birmingham. I grew up in a city, and I'd kind of never experienced anything like that. And a lot of people think it's bleak, but there's something really calming about that bleakness. So something that's really interesting for me, because I study the natural processes of environments like this, and when I was here 30 years ago, the story of the Medway was that it was a Medway that was eroding. You know, all the marshes were being lost, everything, you know, the, the mud was all being stripped away by, you know, kind of like by the tides. And if you looked at these old historic maps, then this would have just all been marsh. Um, and a lot of people have told me that it's starting to kind of come back. So I'm kind of quite interested in that. But out here, you can see these tiny little fragments of marsh. If we'd have gone back 200, 300 years ago, this would have just all been wetland instead of mud. Uh, and you can just see these little kind of fragments left behind on the map. I wonder if all of this is like a you know a remnant of because we look at it now and we've got you know, Strand Leisure Park, but I mean this would have been like an intensely industrialised environment. You know, the, obviously we've got the docks, you've got Chatham Docks and just kind of upstream from us. But even places like this, it would have all been you know industry and boats coming in and out, and and I think all of this is remnants of old docks and jetties and you know and, and all that kind of thing. And, and, on, and on the map, we've got um, Copper House marshes, which I think are those tiny, tiny now, tiny little bits of, bits of marsh, and Copper House, which sounds rather lovely, <laughs> but it comes from Copper Ass, which was the production of, uh, um, of iron sulphate from pyrite, which is a natural mineral in kind of muddy, muddy environments like this. And it was a big industry in Kent and, and Essex, and they'd have dug up the pyrites, let it um, react with the oxygen in the environment, let it oxidise, and it produced sulfuric acid and, uh, and I think iron sulphate, which were used as a dye in all kinds of industries. So actually, these little marshes, which are you know, called Copper House marshes, they'd have, it was basically a big sulfuric acid factory. So when you think of what, of what, it, what would it have looked like, I mean, it, you know, it, it wouldn't have been somewhere to come spend a Saturday afternoon. That would have been a sulfuric acid factory. And it just would have gone straight, all of that acid and, and all the, 
and all the, the pollutants would have just gone straight into the straight into the mud, straight into the river. These old barges here. I guess these have been used as kind of cargo vessels on the Medway. But if you look at these, they've kind of created a little sort of semicircle and like in the centre of it, you've got all the marsh redeveloping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of mud on the outside, but those boats have created this kind of sort of wonderful, like kind of natural, like natural area of calm that's allowed sediment to build up and, and, and let the kind of marsh re-establish. So the Saxon Shore Way, that, well, that runs from what well, that runs from the Thames Estuary out to the Kent coast, doesn't it? I think. Is that based on Hengist and Horster? I don't know. I think it might be. Hengist and Horster turning up at Pegwell Bay near Ramsgate. I think. Someone in the comments will definitely know. Suddenly, you're really starting to get a feel for the for the size, aren't you? For the for, for the for the expanse of these kind of environments. And uh, and yeah, if you'd have gone back, I don't know, sort of 500, 600 years, this would have all been mud. It would have all been infilled with kind of marsh, with a really narrow little channel kind of uh, incising it, its way through. And it's been all the industry, all the, all the mud digging for bricks and the, and the opening the channels up for the ports and, you know, and all that kind of thing. But over you know, hundreds of years, it, it opened up. And there was a lot of worry sort of 30 years ago that this was a, a starved estuary, that there wasn't enough mud and it was kind of like eroding. Um, but yeah, you can see all the, all the wetland is starting to come back. What's the smell, Kate? Well, it's that great muddy smell. Yeah, and what's it, it contain within it? Well, you've got lots of microbes in here, all kind of busy away on the, on the organic matter, and that produces all sorts of gases, sort of like hydrogen sulfide gases, and you've got methane being produced, um, and that, that's kind of what you can smell. It's a good smell. It's not, it's, people often think of it as being like a bad, rotten, dirty smell, but it's not. It's a, it's a, healthy, functioning ecosystem kind of smell. So important point here, this is, is it Copper, Copper something? Copper House. Copper House Marsh is behind us. And um, Kate was saying like, you get into a lot of trouble if you think, oh, I'll just walk out across the mud to get there. You've ended up I, I've, in you know, I've, all sorts I've, of trouble. I've worked out all, out all out on these marshes for years and you have to be ever so careful. Like the mud, I mean, it can be easy to, you know, up to your calves, up to your knees, but, but we've, been, we've been kind of like, you know, chest height, yeah. chest height in, in mud. It's so soft and yeah, and really lots of water, but high water content. And when I when I walked along the um, the river Crouch and I went the wrong way, there was bits where you could see the path you wanted to get to on the other side. Yeah. And you, it was just a short distance. Yeah. And it was mud, and you think, oh, but the but to get there, you'd have to walk a mile in a big loop to get to the other side. You think, well, I wonder if I can just walk across yeah. there because, the, you know, there's no tide. And of course you think, no, that's how you end up yeah. just sinking into that And mouth. there'll be local people who know, well, if you cross it there, you know, you'll, you'll be kind of okay. But, but yeah, if you don't know where you're going or, or what you're doing, it'd be really, really easy to get, to get stuck. It's pointed out that this we're now basically stood on the top of a of a landfill, a former landfill, I should say. Yeah, I mean, lots of the um, lots of these 
country parks are often built on old landfill sites. So we're a little bit high up and that's because there's a load of rubbish dumped, kind of like dumped here. And, and turning them into these sort of green spaces is, qu is quite a good use of it. But why I wanted to come and have a look is I got a bit of a tip off. <laughs> a bit of a tip off yesterday. So this is an old site and it's supposed to be full of inert waste. So i.e. not toxic, it isn't full of pollutants. But uh, supposedly there are plastics starting to, to be eroded out of this site. So I'm quite intrigued to see if we can find, if we can find that. So it's got to be mid 20th century onwards, it can't be that old. Horrid hill there across the mud flats. Obviously, this is low tide, so the water would come in. I wonder why it's called Horrid Hill. What do you reckon it's to do with? Because we know that there were prison hulks moored in the Medway. There were burial sites of plague victims, cholera victims, etc. I wonder if it's something to do with that. I think uh, I, th I think it's a, a bit less macabre. Oh really? Um, and I think it all it all goes back to the horrible industry that was. Oh, because it's yeah, yeah. noxious. And this was all well, this was all um, brickworks. Oh, this is so we went from acid works. Yeah, to yeah, acid, yeah, sulfuric acid production to brick brick production. And one of the um, uh, the ideas behind why Medway Estuary, if a couple of hundred years ago, sort of switched from you know this sort of marshland and sort of like healthy environment to this sort of like muddy barren was because of the brickworks ah, of you know because people were digging the mud yeah you know digging the mud out to create bricks it would have been a, a filthy you know kind of dirty dirty industry uh would have produced quite a lot of pollution but also they you know so you imagine you know where we're looking at now we can see a bit of marsh yeah. there but it's just mud historically this would have just all been marsh right but you start digging that up and you start releasing it, eroding it. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think that's more more and the reason it's called Horrid Hill. So it just would have been industry, you know, brickworks and. Gotcha. And now you can see it coming back. Though can't you see the patches mm. of grass here now coming yeah. back? Well, yeah. Wow. And I love this. So this grass that we're looking at there is something called Spartina. Right. And it's a pioneer. It's like one of the first, like one of the first species that can cope, that will start kind of growing back. And you can see it as little, little tufts, kind of here and there, sort of sticking up out of the mud. It can cope with, you know, being underwater for 20 hours a day. Um, but it starts to trap sediment and stabilise. And those little tufts gradually kind of amalgamate and stitch together to sort of become, you know, this sort of more sort of extensive carpet. And it's a, it's, a, it's a pioneer. So we have got a hill on Horrid Hill. It's not much of a hill, admittedly, but it is a hill. There is, there is an incline. We're trying to get a view down the estuary, basically, is what we're doing here. There's, there's bricks and stuff here. There was clearly structures out here. Like you were saying, it was probably brickworks. And look, there's a, there's a wall here. There are clearly buildings on Horrid Island. Horrid Hill, I should say. And then you say it was probably brickworks. Yeah, the shingle and gravel down here on the foreshore. Yeah. You'd have everything you need to make bricks. Yeah. So you've got mud, so you've got the clay, you've got all the shingle and the gravel to add a bit of strength to your bricks. And then I think they needed chalk, um, and there's little outcrops of chalk, and it might be that this hill might have been a, a slight outcrop of chalk, I don't know. And they considered really charcoal for the furnaces, right? Yeah. So that's horrid, horrid mm. hill. It would have been... You know, completely industrial. Mm, mad, you know, it'd isn't all it? been industry, people working. I mean, I don't know what brickworks would have been like, but uh, you know, it would have been a real industrial, industrial setting. I mean, loads of our estuaries were like that. You know, they'd have been. They got transport, so you could have put it all on a boat. Mouth of the Medway is just 
you know, over there. They could have then taken it up the Thames and into London, so you'd have had your building supply. You've also got the docks at Chatham. Mm. So it would have been a really, you know, bustling, heaving, you know, sort of industrial industrial area with lots of boats coming and going, lots of industry, lots of activity, and probably would have been, like, you know, pretty dirty and, you know, yeah. polluting. That's what all of our estuaries were like back then. We've got the buildings here, we've got clear buildings that would have been the brickworks. And hopefully we'll get the view down the estuary. So we are here on the end of Horrid Hill and you can see the widest part of the, the Medway here and eventually out to kind of make its confidence with the Thames and the sea. Interesting. We're not going to go, we, we aren't, we aren't mm. going to make it on this journey no. for another one, but I worked out here and that, that's Dead Man's Island. And we talked about this earlier, that, okay, so there's all this industrial history, but they also had prisoner ships out here, like prisoner hulks, um, that went back sort of in that pre sort of 1700s, mid 1700s, when they got nowhere to put their prisoners. And so they'd have these big floating prisoner ships uh, then the Crimea War, there were prisons out here, and then the Napoleonic Wars, there were prisons out here. And Dead Man's Island, Island, is uh, is, is where they buried some of the some of the victims. And you said the, the bones were coming through the mud. Yeah, so you can. Well, I mean, I've been out, I'm not onto the island because it's 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 protected, but I've been out on a boat with the Port Authority, and you could you, you can just about make out sort of like the edges of the coffins mm. and and stuff sticking out of the sticking out the edge of the of the mud. What are you going to make me eat, Kate? It's just samphire. Mm. Or sea asparagus. You never had it? Mmm, it's lovely. Samphire, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. What's it it's used in? It's used to, what's it used in? I'm trying to think what samphire is used in. No, I mean, it, it, like you often see it in kind of fancy fishmongers as a little kind of garnish. But it's, it's very so salty. salty. It's very, very salty. <laughs> Great source of salt. Mm. Mm. It's quite nice. Nice. Hopefully I'll have a comparison shot here, but I've just got to the end of Horrid Hill, the peninsula, and the little promontory. And the tides start to come in when we're out there. And it's already coming quite significantly. You can see it's come up over those marsh grasses a bit. And this gate, Kate was just saying, this gate here is here to close because it floods up to this point here. So hopefully by the time we get along the coast there, we'll have seen the water come in significantly and fill this bay in, which will be great. I mean, it might only flood at, at sort of spring tides, you know, when you've got very, oh, right, yeah, kind yeah. of very high tides. But I mean, the water, as you can see, it's, it's often coming up you know, to, to the base of that, uh, that sea wall because you can see all the strand line. It has uh, it's started raining again, which is not great. I have to put the camera inside my waterproof jacket. It's already getting a bit wet. This is an old wharf here. Well, it's pretty clearly an old wharf, isn't it? And you can see all that slate on the other side, which has obviously been dropped there, hasn't it? You can start to see how much the the tide has come in, like Kate was saying, Horrid Hill now sticks out as a hill on the end. And now look, this is a good view here, across that wide expanse of water to that, is that the sewage works on the other side? 
that, yeah, so that's Motney sewage treatment works. What's the other side of the river though? Kind of over the, mm, okay. so that's Isle of Grain. You've got, you've got a power station there. Right. This is a strange bit here, because this looks more modern. You can imagine the brickworks were well, historic, yes. but this looks, yeah. I mean, this is concrete, this looks like it might have been built in the 50s. Yeah, yeah, I worked with somebody who did loads of sampling around here. There was lots of mercury contamination around here. From the industry? Must be, Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. It's kind of quite a hot spot of mercury pollution here. There's some really big fish yeah. swimming around down here near the sewage outfall. This is the sewage outfall here. And they're big silvery fish with like a blue, dark blue streak down the back. But they're they're about what two and a half feet long? They're like they're like this is this big job. They're this big, <laughs> but, yeah, they are. No, they look like they look yeah, they look like they're So that was really interesting. That was a family back there who were doing some crabbing off that wharf, but it's the sewage outfall. And then they showed us some crabs that they caught um, there, but they put them back, obviously they catch them, and then they just go around and put them back in the water. I mean, even if you wanted to eat them, it'd be very ill-advised. <laughs> there, there was an enormous fish as well, so that was fascinating to see. So this, uh, this river is full of life. I really want to see some seals. Apparently there's seals out here. The tide's come in, so it might be seal time. There is a really strong smell of sewage in the air, like really strong. And now we have to walk through here. No, is that too overgrown? No, I think we can do it. Oh, although you've got... Shorts. Your shorts. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it is, it has been... It's good for your circulation. So I am wearing shorts and I'm going to get stung. Like I was saying, it's good for your... Apparently it's good for circulation. I'm getting stung a lot, basically. With every step, I'm getting stung. Are you all right? So this is where we've come out. On the, this is what he meant, this is the sea wall that we're going to walk around there. Wow, that's fantastic. That wasn't the most pleasant walk in the world down through there, with the smell, the pungent smell of untreated human sewage with stinging it or stinging at you the whole way, but this is the reward. Full sensory experience. Yes, ex exactly. <laughs> We're going to turn away from the river now and head inland to Raynham Station so you can say goodbye to the beautiful River Medway. Come out into this orchard which Kate's identified as being pears. So we're going to head in. We were going to go a bit further along the estuary, but we've decided to cut it, sh well, cut it short. We decided, we, A, we've been walking for five hours now, which is quite a long time, but also as banal a reason is the way the trains run. If we go any further than rain, and suddenly our journey back to Stratford suddenly takes two hours, which is ridiculous. But if we get it from here, it's only, um, only 41 minutes. I guess we could have got a cab, I don't know, whatever. But we're gonna, we've had, we've had a good walk. We've seen plenty of estuary, we've soaked it all in. Uh, the sun's getting really, it's like five o'clock and the sun's getting properly hot. Four o'clock, half four. So, to the station. But we've got a bit of a walk to get to the station. So that's the walk done. We're here at Raynham Station now. We stopped in the pub for a pint, but we're tired because it's hot today, so we didn't do anything in the pub. Sometimes people say, why don't you film in the pub? Pubs don't usually like you filming there. Um, so now we've got to wait 
40 minutes for a train, but we're just going to have a sit, look, the glamour, just sit in this little bit of grass verge here. So thank you for joining us on that amazing walk along the Medway. There's going to be lots more Medway walks, I think. Any, any sum, summarising thoughts, Kate? Uh, it was very hot. It was very hot. It was hot, yeah, it was 27 degrees, but humid, very humid. Lots of smells, it mm. felt very immersive because of the heat and yeah. the smell. and the smell the, of the mud, the, the smell mud. of the sewage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, on that, we, you can see we're knackered. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to seeing the next walk, wherever that may be. And actually, I don't really know, I know where I kind of want to do, but I mean, who knows, who knows? Mm.